the next video in this lecture series will be discussing UV visible spectroscopy. Um, there are many different types of UV spectrometers. Um, the most common is the double beam. Well, I'm trying to do it without looking too much. Yeah, sorry about that. Right. The next video in this lecture series uh, will be discussing UV spectroscopy. Um, there are many different types of UV spectrometers. The most common is the double beam UV vis spectrometer. Um, this instrument has two lamps. Uh, one is a source of UV radiation. Uh, the other emits light within a wavelength um, range of about 330 to 700 nanometers. Um, in the visible spectrum. Generally a hydrogen or deuterium lamp is used as a UV source and a tungsten filament lamp is used to emit radiation corresponding to the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. The light emitted from the source is polychromic radiation which is radiation consisting of multiple wavelengths. As it enters a um, monochromator it, strike, it strikes a dispersing element which splits the light into its component wavelengths by changing the position of either the dispersing element or the slit, uh, exit slit of the monochromator, only a specified wavelength of light can pass through. After passing through the monochromator, the light is split into two parallel beams of equal intensity by a curved mirror. Each beam passes through a different cell, the first cell containing the solution to be analysed, and the second cell containing a reference solution of solvent. Um, the detector is usually um, a photomultiplier tube. This measures the difference in intensity of the beam transmitted through the solvent with that of the beam transmitted through the sample. Um, the absorbance is then calculated by the equation given on the sheet um, A, which is absorbance equals log to the base 10 of uh, L0 over L1. UV vis spectroscopy is carried out on very dilute samples, um, thus the solvent is always in a very, very large excess and any peak observed by below about 220 newton, uh, nanometers is therefore to be treated very tentatively. Um, it's highly likely that that peak um, will be uh, resulting from the um, light absorbed by the solvent end. Um, this would usually um, effectively obscure any absorption due to electronic transitions uh, of the dissolved sample. Um, as the spectrum uh, meter becomes uh, very insensitive um, when subtracting two very strong absorptions. Um, for this reason, ethanol is a very popular solvent because it's uh, transparent to radiation above 200 newton meters, nanometers. Sorry. The material used for containers uh, of the sample and reference solutions must also be taken into consideration. Glass is opaque to wavelengths below 300 nanometers, therefore quartz or silica fused uh, cuvettes are generally used as they are transparent to UV above 170 nanometers. Uh, UV vis spectroscopy uh, was introduced in the 1930s and it was a major breakthrough at the time in analytical chemistry, paving the way for uh, many other spectroscopic techniques. It has many applications, particularly in structural elucidation of um, unknown compounds, uh, providing vital information on the extent of conjugation and the presence of heteroatoms. Uh, furthermore, it's a non-destructive technique, um, thus allowing chemists to recover the sample after its analysis by evaporation of the solvent. Nowadays, there are less uses, um, as many other spectroscopic techniques excel in a lot of the areas that it covers. Um, it's mostly restricted to the analysis of compounds that have very characteristic absorptions in the UV and vis range. Okay. Beer Lambert's law is very important to UV vis spectroscopy. Uh, it states that the absorbance of a molecule is directly proportional to the path length of the solution, its concentration, and its molar absorptivity. It's given by the formula on this uh, sheet, um, which is a equals ECL, where E is molar absorptivity of absorbing species in units centimetre squared per mole. C is concentration of solution. L is path length of the cell containing solution. In most instances, that's just one. Um, this relationship makes two valid assumptions. It assumes that all molecules contribute to the absorption of UV light and no molecules are shielded from the electromagnetic radiation. Uh, the molar absorptivity uh, gives an indication of the intensity of the absorption and its probability. It is constant and therefore characteristic of a given molecule. Um, therefore, a high um, E value suggests that the transition will occur readily and will give a strong absorption. Furthermore, it gives information regarding whether a particular electronic transition is allowed. 
If E is greater than 1,000, the transition is allowed. If it's smaller than 100, the transition is forbidden. Um, substituents which increase the molar absorptivity have a hyperchromic effect, whilst substituents which decrease the molar absorptivity are said to have a hypochromic effect. Generally, sigma uh, to sigma star and pi to pi star are allowed, whereas n to pi trans, uh, star trans, uh, transitions are forbidden. Thus, usually pi to pi star transitions have higher E values than for n to pi star transitions. However, the energy gap available is smaller if the electron is excited from a lone pair in a non-bonding orbital. Therefore, n to pi star transitions frequently have a higher um, sigma value, sorry, lambda value, um, and donates a non-bonding orbital. Um, this is um, illustrated in figure one in the handout. Note that in that n, it's n star has a higher lambda value, um, as requires less energy. However, the transformation, the transition is forbidden, and there's a much smaller e value than the pi to pi star. Absorption of electromagnetic radiation in the UV region um, can result in the promotion of valence electrons from a lower electronic energy level to a higher electronic energy level. Uh, in molecules, this typically involves the promotion of an electron in the highest occupied molecular orbital, or HOMO, to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, LUMO. These transitions require higher energy and are constantly, equivalently shorter wavelengths than transitions between vibrational or rotational energy levels since delta E equals HV equals HC over uh, lambda. The ground state is the lowest vibrational energy state of the lowest electronic energy level, E1. The majority of molecules are in this state at room temperature. Absorption of a specific wavelength of UV or visible radiation can promote an electron from the ground state E1 to the excited electronic level E2. This transition is also accompanied by vibrational and rotational transitions and therefore the electron in the ground state could be promoted to any vibrational or rotational energy level of the excited state E2. Thus there are many different transitions possible all requiring a different wavelength of light. Uh, this, in addition to the presence of various solvated and associated species, gives rise to the characteristically broad bands in the UV vis spectra. However, not all electronic transitions can occur. There are spin selection rules which state that for an electronic transition to be allowed, the orientation of the electron spin must remain the same. There are also symmetry selection rules which require the symmetry of the initial and final functions to be different. However, forbidden transitions can still be observed as weak absorptions. The homo lumo gap is the smallest energy difference between a filled and empty antibonding orbital and therefore is an important measurement of the absorption spectrum is the wavelength which constitutes to the maximum absorption or lambda. The smaller the energy gap between the homo and lumo, the longer the wavelength required for the electronic excitation. The table there on the handout lists all the possible electronic, configure, uh, electronic transitions and the lambda in which they occur. Therefore there are three possible chromophores. Um, uh, sigma bonded systems, um, lone pairs in non-bonding orbitals and pi bonded systems. Um, sigma to sigma star transitions involve the promotion of an electron from a bonding sigma orbital to its corresponding anti-bonding orbital. It requires the shortest wavelength of light of any transition and thus the highest energy. Um, absorption uh, maxima are not generally observed in a UV vis spectra. Um, N2 uh, sigma star transitions require the molecules to have a lone pair of non-bonding electrons and entails the excitation of a lone pair of electrons into a sigma star orbital. N to pi star and pi to pi star transitions are by far the most common transitions as the wavelength of light required falls directly into the UV visible spectra of around 270 nanometers. These involve the promotion of an electron from a lone pair or pi or bonding orbital to a pi star antibonding orbital. Conjugation increases the length of the chromophore, thus systems with a higher extent of conjugation have greater absorption intensities and therefore a higher molecular absorptivity. Furthermore, conjugation decreases the energy transition between the homo and lubo orbitals Thus, higher wavelengths are required for electronic transitions. For example, the pi to pi star transitions of ethane requires the promotion of an electron from a pi bonding orbital, the HOMO, to pi star antibonding orbital, the LUMO. This transition requires a wavelength of 185 nanometers. However, increasing conjugation reduces the energy gap of the HOMO and LUMO, and therefore a longer wavelength of electron electromagnetic radiation is required. Thus, for the pi to pi star transitions of butadiene, 
a wavelength of approximately 215 nanometers is needed. If the conjugation is extended further, the energy gap between the HOMO and LUMO will continue to decrease, eventually permitting the absorption of visible light. The appropriate frequency of visible light corresponding to electronic transition is absorbed and the remaining complementary light is reflected, giving the perceived colour of the compound. For example, if a wavelength of 600 nanometers is absorbed, which is around about the orange region, then a compound is perceived to be a green-blue colour. In addition to conjugation, the chromophore is also extended by the presence of heteroatoms with non-bonding electrons which undergo resonance delocalization with the system. Any group capable of extending the chromophore is called an uh, oxochrome. Examples are electron donating substituents like OR or NR2. These generally increase the wavelength and the molar absorptivity of the compound. The Frank Condon principle states that during electronic transitions, only the movement of electrons is allowed. Atoms do not move. Therefore, electrons in the solvent can rearrange themselves to stabilize the excited state. In most electronic uh, transitions, the excited state is more polarized than the ground state. Thus, polar solvents are more readily stabilized than the, uh, the excited state, LUMO, by dipole-dipole interactions. This decreases the energy and also increases the wavelength required for promotion of an electron from the LUMO to the HOMO. Uh, this shift uh, to higher uh, wavelengths is called uh, bathchromic or redshift. In contrast, absorption is due to the end to pi star transition of carbonyls has the opposite effect in polar solvents. This is due to the fact that the ground state is more stabilized by hydrogen bonding than the excited state and increases uh, solvation of the lone uh, pair, lowers the energy of the n orbital, thus uh, hyps hy hypsochromic sorry, or blue shift is observed as a result of the shift to shorter wavelengths. Phenols are acidic with a pKa of around about 8.5 to 10. On addition of base, uh, the uh, phenolic pro uh, proton is removed from the hydroxyl group forming a phenoxide ion. This results in the lone pair being uh, more available for delocalization with the aromatic ring, increasing the conjugation of the system um, and causing a bathchromic redshift. It also has a hyperchromic effect, increasing the intensity of the absorption. Um, as shown in the handout. In contrast, anilines or aromatic amines show a hypsochromic or blue shift on treatment with an acid. This is due to protonation of the amine group um, preventing delocalization of the lone pair with the uh, pi system. This also has a hypochromic effect decreasing the intensity of absorption again shown in the handout. Furthermore, when an aromatic ring has electronically complementary substituents, one is mesomerically electron donating and the other is mesomerically electron accepting power to each other. The length of the chromophore is extended and a large bathchromic shift is and hyperchromic effect are observed. UV-vis spectroscopy has uses in the structural identification of a molecule and is especially important in compounds such as dye stuffs which are highly conjugated and have very characteristic absorptions. Furthermore it has applications in kinetics and the pharmaceutical industry.